Tonight, eight spectacular speaker loves to create and has always had an open mind for ideas. He enjoys connecting with people and loves learning and sharing mutual experiences with them. Please put your hands together for Eric Wu. All right, big crowd tonight, eh? It's my uh, first time here at the Martha Cohen Center. I hope after this presentation it's not my last. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. All right, let's do this. So tonight's theme is spectacular. Now, spectacular, as per the dictionary, means relating to or being a spectacle, which got me even more confused. Putting the same word in the definition doesn't help me. So what I've done is found a bunch of synonyms that will help define what I think it means according to the shit I've done. Let's go. So in 2014, I was using Tinder and was like, hmm, what could I do with that? And decided to just copy Tinder, move to Malaysia, and make millions over there doing it. Was I being a little dramatic, physically moving there with nothing but a dream and a few dollars? Maybe a little, but yo, go hard or go home. <laughs> now, had I been to Malaysia prior to moving there? Of course not, because why should I think a little bit more about one of the most important decisions in my life? I will say though, for everyone here tonight who hasn't been, leave right now and go because the pictures here don't do it justice. It's friggin' amazing and the food is delicious. Literally some of it's so spicy, it's breathtaking. <laughs> now you might be wondering who would be daring slash stupid enough to come with me on this adventure. I think these pictures show the kind of guy my buddy Ken is. The picture in the middle is probably our best picture together. You can tell from my eyes I'm so... I don't even know where we were, we were so wasted. But uh, that's a true buddy right there. We hustled as much as we could and we were stepping out onto the literal boxing ring trying to convince people to give us money for our dream. I was practicing in my dreams asking for people to give us money. Did we get that money? Hell no. We didn't, but it was a thrilling ride nonetheless because it really put us into the hot seat. After many, many months of sweat work, Sparka came into creation, not gonna lie, I freaking love the name and the logo is legit tattooed on my back. And I gotta say, it's astounding that two guys with no prior experience, I worked in property valuation, Ken in mortgage lending, managed to get this done. This is how the app looked, it's friggin' impressive, yeah. Look clean and has shit on it that Bumble and Tinder only introduced later. Did I leverage my sister, you know, girlfriend's profile pics and use them to get guys? I mean, of course I did. <laughs> now, you can make the best app in the world, but if no one knows about it, it's a fail. We're in a foreign country, no base of friends to count on, and we barely know anyone there. So what did we do? Partnered with people who did, and we held two dazzling dating events. Now, how did we do? Absolutely fantastic. Not only did we get a ton of new users and met a lot of new friends, we learned the logistics of hosting these events, the stress of doing an all-you-can-drink event, and the power of partnering with the right groups and locales. All in a foreign country. Shit like this stays with you forever. <laughs> now, all good things must come to an end. My buddy miraculously got deported. That's another story. So, you know, that's half of Sparka gone. I was running out of funds and eating boiled chicken wieners for dinner. So my beautiful sister came down, bailed me out of Southeast Asia and brought me home. But was it all a waste? No way it wasn't because of all the amazing experiences I learned and shared along with all the wonderful friends I made during my time there that will stay with me forever. Yes, I lost a shit ton of money, but overall it was worth it. One of the wildest adventures ever and I invite everyone with the dream and maybe better planning and maybe more cash to try it out. Also super random, but in all my life in North America, I never saw no celebrity and randomly I saw Mariah Carey in Malaysia. I was walking in the mall and noticed a bunch of people waiting outside the LV store and when I saw Mariah, I lost my shit. It was amaze balls. Lesson is, go to Malaysia and you might see an American celebrity there. Now back in Calgary, I was still digging the tech startup scene, so when the opportunity came to be a co-organizer of the grand reopening of Hackerness Calgary, I jumped on it. Hackerness is a nonprofit that unites tech communities together. Here we have some of my co-organizers, Shaman and Ivana. 
Those events we held were simply amazing. We had sponsors like Skip the Dishes, Cisco, and CGI, and we had almost 200 people attend our events during our heyday. Met a lot of people, learned a shit ton, and we were literally planning the next event for March 2020, and then COVID hit. It really sucked not to be able to do those events anymore, but that became an opportunity for me to start up our most recent venture, Off The Walk, a podcast about growing up Asian in a Western society. Check out how eye-catching that logo is. You can bet your ass that's tattooed on me as well. <laughs> so obviously I had to bring Ken back, minus the hair. It's uh, actually astonishing he agreed, especially after our fiasco in Asia. He's the producer and Lance is the co-host, and as you can see from his dubious face, he looks super confident that we're going to do well. But the first episode was an absolute blast. Since then, we've released 64 episodes total, and it's been a remarkable journey the whole time. We were all surprised that we've even made it this far, and that we're still going, and that no one has actually quit. But we keep going because we love being able to tell these stories, and we would do this even if we made no money. Which we aren't making any money, actually. <laughs> and because our podcast is entirely virtual, we've been able to have conversations with people all around the world. Even I got an interview last year from someone's podcast in the Czech Republic. It's truly been a wondrous experience, and we're hoping to have even more of that this year. Now, as side consequence from the podcast was our ability to launch some clothing merch. In a previous life, I attempted to start a clothing label, so it's always been a thing of mine to have my own clothing brand. And that was achieved with this podcast. A bonus is that our logo is absolutely fabulous, that it just fits with everything. That I also capitalize again, the sisters, friends, girlfriends as models. Of course. <laughs> my dream goal is to be able to interview John Cho one day, but since it's gonna cost between 30 to 50K, I'm also looking for donations tonight to help me with that. <laughs> Other things we want to do in the future include a short video, a book about Asian frugal tips, and more after-hours bonus content. Don't worry, it's not OnlyFans unless you want it. 